Hello, thanks so much for clicking on this video. My name is Carolina Mariposa and I'm the founder of Butterfly Grove. If this is your first video with me, I will give a quick introduction. I am a medical intuitive who also has a background in psychology, including early childhood mental health and a variety of holistic healing practices. I founded Butterfly Grove in order to empower highly sensitive children, teens, and parents. So I'm excited to make this video today about getting a good night's sleep. Uh, this was inspired by the last two weeks of me not getting a good night's sleep. Uh, like many parents of young kids, I uh, sometimes find that sleep eludes me because my toddler is waking during the night. Uh, in her case, fortunately, it's just a typical sleep regression, which means she's just uh, going through a developmental leap and is expressing the change and her reaction to it in uh, sleeping a little less often. But um, I know for many highly sensitive children and teens and parents, uh, a good night's sleep is something that often eludes us. And uh, having really felt that the last couple of weeks, I wanted to make this video to share some of the strategies that I find helpful generally and that I often advise uh, for my clients. So first of all, I'm hoping everyone knows that it is important to get a good night's sleep. Uh, in case you're not clear on that fact, I highly recommend a book by Matthew Walker called Why We Sleep. He really talks in that book about how foundational sleep is to our mental health and our physical health and our entire well-being. And for highly sensitive people, uh, we tend to need a little more sleep than people who aren't highly sensitive. And that's because sleep is a time where we often are restoring and recharging ourselves as other people are, but we have so much more depth of processing that we do during the day. So we require more time in sleep to fully recover from the day. And uh, there's things that you can do as a highly sensitive person throughout the day, as well as around bedtime to promote a good night's sleep. So I'm gonna talk about both of those things. So during the day, most of the things that I'm going to advise are pretty typical self-care strategies. They don't necessarily always uh, link to sleep in people's minds, but I find that it's really important to take care of ourselves throughout the day so that we're entering the evening and bedtime in a calm um, and rested state already. I know that's not how most HSPs feel at the end of the day, but here are some tips if you haven't thought of these for ways to kind of check in with yourself during the day and make sure that you're taking care of yourself. So one really, really important thing for all people, but especially highly sensitive kids and teens and their parents is to get enough exercise during the day. And most pediatricians recommend at least an hour of physical activity. And I could do many videos just on the benefits of exercise and how it uh, affects your brain and how it affects your health and your immune system. Uh, but it's safe to say that it's just very important to do. And one thing that you might not find out in the literature that I find is a benefit uh, of exercise for highly sensitive kids is that because we have such sensitive bodies and they tend to get into a stressed state more easily than others, having physical movement and activity helps our sensitive body kind of discharge the extra stress that we might um, take into our bodies throughout the day. Another piece of uh, self-care that's important during the day for highly sensitive kids is getting outside in nature. And hopefully you can combine this with your time exercising. And hopefully you live in a place where you can easily access nature. I know some folks are in the city um, where there isn't as much natural material or beauty, but hopefully you can at least find a park or maybe your backyard. Uh, if you're fortunate enough to live near open space, I encourage you to spend time there. The reason why, and again, there's there's a lot of research and, and reasons people will quote to you out there about the benefits of nature. But what I find from an energetic standpoint, since I'm a medical intuitive, is that earth energy uh, tends to vibrate at a much lower and slower frequency 
than our energy does or the energy of technology or the other um, energetic influences we might experience throughout the day. And when we come into contact with the natural world and the energy of the earth, we're more likely to resonate at that lower, slower frequency. And what that does is it really helps a lot of the other aberrant energies or energies we don't want uh, that we might not even be fully aware of that we picked up during the day. It allows them to just kind of ground off us and kind of melt away. So as much time as you're able to spend in nature, even if it's just in your own garden, with your hands in the dirt or in a sandbox even, if you're a younger kid or on the playground, it's so important to get that contact with earth energy and uh, nourish your body with that lower, slower frequency. So that's self-care strategy number two. Uh, also, one thing that not all HSP kids or parents think about is eating and how that might impact your sleep. And I like to think of it in terms of both quantity and quality. Many HSP kids struggle with either eating enough food or eating too much food. And that's because food is a way that sometimes we cope with stress, we might overeat. Um, as a way to cope, or uh, because we're so focused on other people, we might have a tendency to not pay attention to when our body's hungry, or we might even like give our lunch away at school, and so we're not necessarily getting enough calories during the day. Either one of those things can put your body in a more stressed state and can make it difficult to fall asleep at the end of the day. It's just more stress that your body has to recover from if you've eaten too much or too little. Of course, there's also the quality of the food. And if you are eating a healthy diet with lots of fruits and vegetables and uh, you feel good about your nutrition, you're gonna be much more likely to have restful and restorative sleep because you're giving your body the nutrients that it needs to uh, nourish itself and recover from any stress from during the day. So if you're tending to eat more junk food or more processed food, it's important to try to move the needle towards a whole and um, unprocessed nutritious foods. So if you're practicing those strategies during the day and then you come home at the end of a busy day and you want to unwind and get ready and set yourself up for a really good night's sleep, there are a few strategies that you can practice. The first one is going to be a little controversial, especially <laughs> because you're watching this video. But one recommendation I have is to reduce screen time and to try to stop any use of screens at least an hour before bedtime, ideally two hours before bed, but at least one hour. And if that seems like a really hard thing for you to accomplish, if you're really used to, um, watching TV to fall asleep, or if you're used to, if you're an older kid who's on your phone a lot, even lying in bed on your phone, that may feel like a daunting ask. But I encourage you to at least try to move the needle a little bit each day or each week so that you're eventually getting to the point where you're at least an hour away from screens before bedtime. Maybe try 15 minutes earlier one night, 15 minutes earlier the next night, that kind of thing. Uh, also an hour before bed, it's important to kind of start a winding down routine. And an hour might seem like a lot of time to some people. I know like some of my non-HSP friends can literally just come home and fall into bed and they sleep solidly through the night. But as highly sensitive kids and teens and parents, we tend to be more impacted by all the energy we've picked up throughout the day and we tend to need more time to wind down at the end of the day. So allowing an hour uh, is a really good self-care strategy and there's a lot of things that you can do during that hour that might support you getting a good night's sleep. So one strategy that can be really helpful is uh, just getting ready for bed in terms of your hygiene. So bathing, whether it's a full bath or shower or just washing your face, um, if you're older, taking off your makeup, just having some kind of hygiene ritual that is soothing for your body and comforting for you. 
Some people like to incorporate scents that are relaxing into that ritual, whereas some HSPs like to have uh, products that are completely unscented because a scent can overwhelm them. If you are one of those people who's highly sensitive, um, I highly recommend a new company called Allure of Calm by one of my fellow HSP entrepreneurs. Jasmine is the founder of it and she has created an entire product line of uh, unscented soaps and lotions and candles that can really help you relax at the end of a busy day. I'll link to her shop below. And again, I don't have any promotional um, agreement with her. I just want to lift up my other highly sensitive people who are out there <laughs> uh, starting businesses. So I encourage you to check out that website. Um, but back to the strategies, uh, when you're uh, relaxing your body, another way to really soothe your sensory body is through rhythm and movement. And rhythm can just be rhythm in some gentle music that you're listening to. It can also be some gentle drumming that you might do or rhythmic movements such as rocking or swaying. Uh, I know some kids who like to just stretch or do a little yoga at the end of the day to kind of help their body relax. Uh, anything that you can do to really relax your physical body is helpful. And um, emotionally, a lot of HSP kids and teens have a lot to process at the end of the day. So I also advise incorporating some time to talk to someone who is supportive of you uh, and tell them about your day. Even if nothing really stressful or really exciting happened, it's good sometimes just to download what you did that day if you haven't done that already. Um, so making some time to talk to your parent or talk to a sibling, uh, especially if there is something stressful that happened, to really get it off your chest and kind of get their thoughts on it so that you're not carrying that into your sleep. Another way to calm yourself emotionally is to focus on your breathing and I do have a, a separate video that talks about strategies and has a, a breathing exercise in it. But um, for the sake of this video, just pay attention to how fast or slow you're breathing and um, try to deepen and slow your breathing whenever you can when you're trying to sleep. As much as you can get your breath really down deep into your belly, uh, as opposed to up here, uh, it's helpful to just relax your body and relax your nervous system. And uh, the other thing that I like to do that other people might not think about is to energetically set up the space that you're going to sleep in. And I do this with my daughter every night and it's basically just using your imagination to set up your room at a, a, a frequency that is relaxing for your body and that feels really safe and comforting. And it's often helpful to bring in the images of a nature spot to, to do that. So a beach or a mountain, or if you had a favorite place that you went to earlier in the day, bringing the energy of that place in, you're basically just imagining that that place is in your room, kind of like that book where the wild things are, how his room turned into the world all around. You're bringing your favorite nature spot into your room. And uh, as a few examples, I know one family that has a favorite hiking spot that's out in the woods in Marin, and they like to imagine that that forest is in their child's room, and they talk about it and they kind of imagine it together down to the sounds, the smells, uh, the sights that they might see, the birds, the trees. The, the feel of the ground and the pine needles on the ground. So they really go in detail into what the room looks like with that nature spot in it. Um, in my case, I use my child's imagination. She's only two, but there was a, about a three week period where she decided she wanted to have 100 miles of pine trees. I don't know why it was 100 miles or why pine trees, but she wanted 100 miles of pine trees in her room every night. So we would imagine that together. And then we also kind of set up a special place in the middle of that uh, forest of 100 miles of pine trees where she could sleep that had kind of her favorite images and colors in it. And um, she's able to fall asleep pretty quickly, generally, when she's not going through a sleep regression. <laughs> 
uh, when she has that sort of, sort of energy set up. So uh, hope some of those tips are helpful for you. If you uh, are interested in learning more, I encourage you to check out my website, which I'll list below. And uh, if you think you might be interested in working with me, I would love to book a discovery call with you. It's a free call uh, for 30 minutes so we can talk to each other and I can uh, learn more about how I might be supportive of your family. So thanks so much for tuning in and uh, I'll see you next time.